So this is the AMD Radeon RX 7800 XT, and this is AMD's response to NVIDIA's RTX 4070. At least that's what they're comparing it to in all the review material. Now here's the crazy thing. This is retailing for $499, at least based on MSRP, whereas right now an RTX 4070 is around $600. Bucks. That's a $100 price difference. And if this is faster, or at least the same performance as an RTX 4070, this becomes a much better deal. Now, I don't have an RTX 4070 here in the studio, which is very unfortunate, but I do have some of the fastest gaming laptops, so we're going to see how it stands up against that. But we're also going to be including an RTX 4080, and an RTX 4060 Ti in this review sample. Now I do have a 7700 XT, but look how big this thing is. Like this is the sample they sent out to reviewers. This is a weaker card than the 7800 XT, which is basically like half its size. I can't even fit this into my PC case, so we're gonna save this for another day. Now in terms of overall form factor, you can see how much smaller the 7800 XT is compared to something like the RTX 4080. Now this is the 7900 XTX, which obviously is a little bit bigger because it is a more powerful card. But in terms of overall length, it's a little longer than the 4060 Ti, but it's significantly smaller than the RTX 4080. In fact, it's not as dense compared to the 7900 XTX. Like when you pick this up, this feels like jam packed with metal fins. Whereas this obviously has a lot less since it doesn't use as much power. I'm really digging the design of this. Like I love the little painted red metal fin portion over here. It is a two eight pin card. So you are gonna need two eight pin connectors to get this thing going. 263 watts is the rated power for this card. And you're looking at about a 700 watt power supply. At least that's what AMD recommends in order to have this function normally. In terms of ports, we have an HDMI port. This is obviously 2.1a. And then you have three display 2.1 ports. This is a big deal because if you buy an NVIDIA card right now, they top out at display 1.4a. So you can do a lot more with 2.1. It also has a 256 bit memory speed compared to 192 and it does support AV1 encoding. But the most important thing is the VRAM size. A lot of games are requiring a lot more VRAM. This one tops out at 16 gigabytes compared to 12 gigabytes on an RTX 4070. Now to remove as many variables as possible, I use the exact same PC for all three desktop GPUs. It was an i9-13900K with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. For the laptops, I made sure they all use 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, but the fastest gaming laptop in the world is using an AMD Ryzen 9 7945HX3 CPU, and then the HP Omen Transcend with the RTX 4070 is using an i9-13900HX CPU. Now I wanted to start off with productivity benchmarks because a lot of these tests are very CPU dependent, and you can see the difference between a desktop and a laptop CPU. For example, in Photoshop, which really loves CPU and RAM, it was pretty much the desktops on top, regardless of the GPU and laptops on the bottom. In fact, there was only a 3% difference between the RTX 4080 and RX 7800 XT, but there was a massive gap between the laptops, about a 17% difference. If you're using Premiere Pro, there's a lot more GPU involved, but it's still very CPU intensive. You still had the RTX 4080 at the top, but it had an 8% increase over the RX 7800 XT. But the gap between the laptop and the 7800 XT was only 13% compared to 17% in the Photoshop test. Now the After Effects test is very interesting. It needs a minimum of 12 gigabytes of VRAM to perform. So the 4060 Ti could not complete this test and same with the laptop, which also only has eight gigabytes of VRAM. The difference between the RTX 4080 and the 7800 XT were negligible. They were so close, but the RTX 4090 did trail behind both of these GPUs. After Effects really loves VRAM, but it also likes faster CPUs, which is why the desktop computers did a bit better. Now, if you want an actual video program that does take advantage of the GPU, DaVinci Resolve completely talks a different story. And this is where the NVIDIA card, the RTX 4080, ends up on top with a pretty good lead, about a 5% faster lead 
over the RX 7800 XT. Now gaming is where things get very interesting because the CPU is not needed as much as those productivity benchmarks, which means the RTX 4090 in the laptop starts to take second place for most of these tests. And as you can see here in TimeSpy, this is what you should expect for most of these gaming results. In fact, if we're talking about 1920 by 1080p gaming, RTX 4080 takes the top lead very comfortably, as it should, it's a faster GPU. But in second place, you have the laptop RTX 4090. Now for Dirt 5, we had the same story. RTX 4080 on top, 4090 in second place, and then the RX 7800 XT had a 31 FPS lead over the RTX 4060 Ti. But the COD Modern Warfare 2 results were very interesting. This was the only game where the RX 7800 XT took the lead. It actually outperformed all the GPUs in this test. In fact, it got a 26 FPS lead over the desktop RTX 4080, which is really impressive. But in Cyberpunk, things went back to normal. The RTX 4080 back on top with a huge lead over the laptop 4090 and the RX 7800 XT. But the difference between the 4090 laptop and the 7800 XT was only 12 FPS. F122 was interesting because I could not get this card to pass 144 FPS, which happens to match the refresh rate of the monitor. Yes, I checked to see if V-Sync was off and it was. I even had FPS maxed out in the actual game so that it could go higher, but for whatever reason, it wouldn't pass 144 FPS. So please take this graph with a grain of salt, but my guess it would be the same as the other ones. If this was performing as it should, it would be in third place, just below the RTX 4090. In terms of QHD gaming, it's a very similar story. The RTX 4080 was always in first place. You had the RTX 4090 in the laptop in second, and the RX 7800 XT in third. But in Call of Duty, out of all the games I've tested, was the only game where the 7800 XT continuously came as number one. Maybe it's the extra VRAM along with some AMD optimizations. It just performed much better in Call of Duty. And that's a weird thing because it's been doing that for the past few years. Even in previous versions of Call of Duty, I've always found that AMD cards do perform better. In terms of 4K gaming, this is not really a 4K card amd is advertising this as qhd gaming but obviously if it's an older title you can absolutely game at 4k like i was using this card to play overwatch which is a very well optimized game and this obviously crushes 4k on epic without any issues now if you are planning on buying this for blender I suggest you buy an NVIDIA card, but if you are buying this for Starfield, it can totally play the game comfortably. I tried it at ultra high, which is a bit high even for most graphics cards, and it got around 50 to 60 FPS. It felt smooth, but obviously you're not taking advantage of your high refresh display. If you drop the settings down to medium, you'll get well over 100 FPS, and you'll have a much better gaming experience. So the one thing that I really realized from this video is just how bad the laptop RTX 4070 is. It is god awful. Like I've always known this because I've reviewed a lot of laptops this year, but man, this graph and these charts just make me realize how truly terrible it is. And I really hope Nvidia doesn't release something like that next year with their 5070 series because it will be just another disappointment. But if you're planning on picking up this card, I am very shocked how well it performs in productivity-based applications. It does a really good job of standing neck and neck with Nvidia's best GPUs. It's just gaming is kind of a different story, like I think this is going to be a little bit faster than the RTX 4070, but the one thing that really attracts me to this GPU is its price point, $500. It's $100 cheaper than the RTX 4070. Sure, it's more expensive than the RTX 4060 Ti, but the performance is insanely better, and you're getting so much more value from this card compared to those two other NVIDIA ones. Overall, great stuff. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.